Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tales from the Closet. Hell yeah. I liked that. Um, uh, I'm Allie Beardsley, your host. This morning I woke up, and it was a slow morning for me. I'm here with uh, three lovely guests. I uh, Let's just, a little bit about me. <laughs> It is episode 17. Uh, this podcast, I felt very proud this morning. I stepped out of bed and immediately onto my laptop, which was on the ground. Uh, and I, I was thinking about this podcast because I'm so excited to meet these three people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is this a good top? Who knows? Uh, TPG. <laughs> but um, uh, it just feels like just the other day we started this and already we're 17 eps in. So thank you to everyone who has talked to me, who has reached out in DMs, people who have submitted questions. For those of you who don't know, we have an anonymous survey online that you can submit any question you want. Uh, if you are in the closet, it's completely anonymous, so have no fear. Uh, but yeah, we'll get to those questions later. First off, let's let's meet our gorgeous panel today. Uh, who are you? How do you identify? What do you like mm -hmm. what's something you've made that you're proud of should i start yeah please okay <laughs> hi i'm bully Fay collins and um i don't really mind any pronouns but people usually say uh he and him and what was the last thing uh how do you what do you what have you made that you're proud of oh um i make performance and I made a show called Plight Notions with Shandy that I think was really good. <laughs> That's amazing. Wait, when was that? Um, I toured with it in the wintertime. Oh. Yeah. That's so fun. Plight yeah, Notions with Shandy? Plight Notions with Shandy. Shandy. Oh, my yeah. God. I love that. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Hi. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the program. I thank decided you. I'm going to switch and start calling this a program. Viewer supported program. Anyway. Hi. Who are you? <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me on the program. I'm, uh, I'm Sammy Cohen. Uh, I identify as she, her. Cool. And um, what was the next one? What, it, what, it, what have I made that yeah, I'm that proud of? Yeah, that you're proud of. of. Um, I mean, I've made a lot of things uh, here at College Humor that I'm really proud of. Ooh. I wrote, and I wrote a, uh, a parody to a Lizzo song called Dogs This Week. <laughs> Yes. That I'm pretty proud of. Great. Sounds cool. like something Lizzo would approve of. Yeah. I honestly hope that I make <laughs> her proud. I really hope to get on her radar. Really, really. <laughs> this is going to just. Yeah. Awesome. And lastly. Hi, I'm Reese Ernst, and uh, I use he, him pronouns. And um, I identify as a Libra. And. <laughs> um, I guess an Angelino for the time being, and um, other things. And I, um, I'm proud of this new movie I just made called Adam that's coming out in theaters. I think actually by the time this comes out, this podcast is airing, I think it'll be almost in theaters. Ow! So please check it out. Cool. Friends. I'm very excited to yeah, see Adam. I'm too. hoping to see it this weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much, all three of you, for being on the show. Three total sweeties. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah. <laughs> no problem, Bully. So polite. Um, we Usually we start off with, so how did you come out of the closet? What did that look like for the three of you individually? Yeah, we're um, going to start with you. Okay, we're going to start with me. <laughs> so I, it happened really rapidly by accident for me. And I was 15, so it was pretty early compared to a lot of people, mm -hmm. I think. Um, my mom asked me, which was great, because my aunt had been telling her I was gay since I was two. Wow. Which, of course, most people were like, that's so fucked up. Why, what are you talking about? <laughs> this person is two years old. Um, and then, but like, you know, also, it was a very open door policy for me in the closet, just like constantly shouting from inside, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. and like opening windows all the time, uh -huh. peeking out. Yeah, being <laughs> like, "I'm in here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in here. Are you ready for me? <laughs> I'm waiting." And like, 
<laughs> anyway, so my mom asked me because I started going to those like GSA meetings mm-hmm. at high school. Mm-hmm. And she went and picked me up once and then just like looked around and was like, all these people are faggots. <laughs> like, and then I think she kind of like panicked. And then so in the car on the way home, she was like, oh, like, are you gay? Was it panicked? It was like that? Um, a, she was really nervous. Wow. Yeah, she was very nervous. And then I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I was like in this, with my mom, I was less scared because she was just not as scary as my dad. Oh, yeah. Who was like just somebody I didn't really understand yet. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was like such a femme kid. Like now we're really good friends, but I feel like that was the person who I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, you know? inter- is your dad like pretty mask, I guess? Yeah, like for sure. Binary. Yeah. Now he's changed a lot. You know, like you get older and your estrogen levels. Oh yeah, jump. that's so interesting. And then he's like also become really religious, so he's like, he's really like zen about it. Like everything has just wow. become a little bit more fluid for him. Mm-hmm. But the way I came out to him was fucked up because it was a total accident. Because I just wanted to show him this like scary photo I took on the bus of a baby doll in the window (laughs) and it was on my MySpace profile so I was like I'll just show it to him on my MySpace profile it says I'm gay yeah, you in the had, middle of my MySpace, I, MySpace you listed profile. your orientation. Yes, and it just says, <laughs> I'm gay. Right next to the photo that I was showing him, uh, being like, look at this cool photo I, t- I took, Dad. Oh Isn't this my cool? God. And he's like, what? What is that? And I remember this like deer hoof song was playing in the background <laughs> that I had that just like automatically played when I opened up the page. Oh my and god. And still to this day when I hear that deer hoof song, it like brings me back to that moment. Oh, oh my god. god. Yeah. Do you think he thought of it? Cause you know like a lot of parents are like, well if you left your journal out, you wanted me to read it. Or you know what I mean? They kind of oh. like read intention into this. Do you think he was like, that was bully coming out to me? I wonder, we've never really discussed that, you know, like he's, we've actually never talked about that moment, which is really crazy. That's so funny. Because I feel like I don't like having conversations with my parents about gay stuff, not because it's, just because, you know, like, it always comes down to the same thing of them, like, reassuring me that they love me. Because they're like very Christian people who live in a very hetero, like free market Christianity world. Mm-hmm. So I feel like they know that I feel really alienated there. Yeah, but and I appreciate still... that that they reassure me it's lovely. Mm-hmm. But I'm also like, like you know, we don't have to dwell. I have the same thing. It is pretty othering when someone has to like really double down on telling you that they love you because mm-hmm. it's like. Why Why would you even have to say, you know what I mean? It's like someone saying, yeah. like, I'm not going to read your diary when you go take a shower. And you're like, why did you even say, like, <laughs> what? now you've put that thought into my head when they're like, yeah. we really do love you. And it's like very, like, in spite of. Yeah. And I get it. Like, they're, I really don't even, it's like, I, I, I don't. There's other things that are way more othering to me. Like they can say that to me as much as they want. It's just that those, the things that they don't have as much language for that I feel like I'm on another level. I'm just like, I try and be like a listener and then sp- speak in a way that they can hear me. Okay. Cause yeah. I just don't need them. I'm like, you guys lived your own lives. I don't need you to completely understand me and like where I come from Mm -hmm. because there's just like no way that you can because of the life that you've had yeah that's a really positive outlook on it like you have like meeting grounds and you're like that's fine yeah (laughs) it's still hard like I still speak my mind I don't like let them make me feel like shit about stuff Mm -hmm. but there's still a level of like humility for me where I'm like you can't know about like trans politics and like other all kinds of stuff that like gender fluidity and Mm -hmm. what it is really like to be a homosexual (laughs) yeah (laughs) and about like gay sex like you know they ask a lot of 
what would be considered very ignorant questions, mm -hmm. but like from a place of sincerity. Yeah, sincere and, ignorance, which is a different yeah. kind of ignorance, I would say. Yeah, yeah, it's not like offensive, like, so which one of you is the girl? Like, yeah. tell me, yeah. you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, but they have asked that <laughs> question. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> starting it off strong. Starting off strong. Um, no, yeah, I fully identify with that. Yeah, yeah. My parents are both really religious, so talking to them is, it's so sweet. There's still like a really sweetness and obviously a lot of love there, but sometimes you're like, eh, here we go. Yeah, totally. <laughs> here we go. My dad was like, there's a girl in a lot of photos with you lately. That's mm. like the most of a, like, direct conversation we can have and i'm like Ooh. yeah and he always picks like the wrong person it's like <laughs> never someone i'm actually dating i'm like yeah that's my coworker. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you're like that's my therapist that's my therapist i'm always yeah. taking photos <laughs> with my therapist <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever taken a photo with your therapist i wish no mm, me neither uh sammy how did you come out um so late in my life oh um, What's funny is my, when I was, so not in high school did I come out, but when I was in high school, I sat my sister down to kind of have a serious conversation with her and she, everyone else knew or was on to that I, I was gay way before I came out. Interesting. And um, I'd never had like crushes on anyone. I sat her, one of my sisters down. I was like, I gotta talk to you about something. And it was no big deal, nothing super serious. And um, and I, you know, I started talking to her, and she went, "Oh, I thought you were going to tell me you were gay." And I was like, "Oh," um, and panicked. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and then cut to I don't know, ten years later. And when I came out, I first came out to two of my closest friends, who I felt really safe with, mm -hmm. who I lived with at the time, and. Um, I was in a, I had been in a straight relationship. I was still. Um, anyway, I came out to them and it was, they congratulated me like I had won the lottery. Yes! Um, oh, and it was just so, uh, and then it gave me a lot of confidence to go out into the world and um, like an end a relationship I was in, mm -hmm. a straight relationship. And then I came out to, my family all individually, mm -hmm. really casually. And I think um, I think I sort of like blacked out for a month while I was kind of like, <laughs> okay, I just want to do this. Yeah, just a dissociation month Com where you're like, kind of through it, okay. yeah. Uh, and I think a part of me, yeah, they all, they all assumed, because when I did come out, I like called my mom and she works and I'm from LA and she works here and I'll sometimes just stop by and say hi. And I was like, hey, are you, at the office and she was and I was like I'm gonna come by and say hi and I popped in I was there for like five minutes I sat down she's like hey hey uh, she calls me boo everything okay I was like yeah um I think I want to talk to you about something I, I I think I am not straight and I like women and I knew but it was just my like ease into oh, it oh definitely it's always like I think I think yeah, yeah, always yeah. always A soft coming out <laughs> um and then she said uh and then she pointed out for years I've been like well everyone's a little gay I've been soft I was softly kind of setting them up <laughs> well, we're all we're all gay <laughs> everyone's a little gay um and so I came out to her <clears throat> at, just at work um and her reaction, like my sisters, like I'd say 90% of my friends and family, they were like, hmm, that makes sense. Or, oh yeah, we figured. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Wow. Uh, see you later. Does it? That's um, great. And then it was more, con I think more in-depth conversations, but I think I was just um, anticipating a lot more confusion and so many things that everyone was real, at first, real chill about it. Um, and my dad passed away, so I never got to tell him. Oh, Which that's... is kind of, and that I wonder, I don't know how he would have taken it. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah, and that's led to some interesting conversations with my family. I don't think he would have been, I think he would have been fine, but way more difficult. Oof, He's like yeah. conservative police officer, mm. not the, yeah. Oh, my dad's in law enforcement too. It's a yeah. type of, mentality mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah 
Oh man, um, it's that's, a conditioning. It's a conditioning <laughs> for sure. Uh, but yeah, that was that was kind of it. And that's then, really nice that it was so uh, chill. We talk a lot mm-hmm. on this podcast about how nice it would be to just be able to walk into the kitchen where your parents are and be like, "Oh, by the way, I'm gay," and they're like, "Oh, okay, cool, noted." And it's like not a deal. You know, like the yeah. fact that it's a deal makes it, it's just so unfair. So that sounds truly lovely. I, yeah, it really was not, I think there was like more in-depth, com- the the person I was dating at the time was the hardest one. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. That yeah. was the hardest one. Um, and came with like, on my end, I felt so guilty and mm-hmm. felt so bad for, I think like months, a year, like almost yeah. a year after. Um, but yeah, luckily most people were real chill about it. That's great. Were you able to talk to the person and be like, I'm gay? Or was it like, were you not quite sure yet? Or I was sure. I was sure for such a long time. Um, I think my guilt, I was sure for a year. I mean, I've known for, I've known since I had that conversation with my sister in high school. Mm. Um, and I wasn't telling her then, but I've known for so long, and I had s- crushes on my friends in middle school. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I did tell uh, the guy that I'd been in a very long-term relationship with. Mm. Um, that he was a beard. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I have a beard, but what's a beard? Yeah. <laughs> um, he, yeah, and he was very sweet, but definitely took it the hardest yeah understandably so yeah 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 well it's so confusing because it's like there is love there Mm -hmm. there are so many different kinds of love yeah well Uh, we're best friends and he interpreted it one way and i felt really safe in that relationship totally yeah um because i was so scared of yeah i think a lot of things that I didn't need to be, but they feel scary no matter what. Yes, it, it's like yeah. it's harrowing in the closet. Mm-hmm. You're truly just like on a razor's edge for like <sighs> years of your life. Totally. Uh, yeah, I came out <clears throat> uh, later also, but I w- when I dated uh, like a cis dude in college, we broke up. But I was too afraid to like tell him why, and I was just like, I'm not attracted to you. And that's why we broke up. And that's like way worse. And it's like <laughs> so brutal to be like, I'm just not attracted to you or any cis man. You know, so it's like, oh, interesting. Like that like would have. It's, it's come to my attention that you are hideous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, exactly. <laughs> because you that disgust like, me so thoroughly. Kind of what I, I, no I was longer saying. Continue all this. of the sudden, I'm not attracted to you. Um, yeah. So I'm just, I look back on that and I'm like, interesting. I probably should have been. <laughs> A hundred times more honest than I was in that moment. But. Have you ever had a conversation with him since? Or was it just... Yeah, well, so we had one super strange conversation like a year later that was mm-hmm. like 15 minutes long and <laughs> I still didn't come out. Uh, but it sounded like he knew. Because we had a lot of mutual friends, so I think someone told him. Uh, but yeah, it was just like... Mm. I don't know, when you're in like the church, I was in like a very religious school where you like literally sign a contract to go there saying you won't have sex or do drugs or have like a gay thought. You like sign literally a contract, like oh, with a quill. <laughs> and, uh, in your blood. And it yeah, also yeah. like the Harry Potter thing, it like carves it yeah, into your yeah, flesh yeah, as yeah. you write it. I have like a dark mark. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think just everything was so like upside down there, it was, like I wasn't about to come out to him because I was just deep in the closet. The closet was multiple rooms long. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, yeah, Reese, what about you? Um, well, I think there was a multiple room closet for me too. There's sort of a gauntlet of, um, <laughs> you know, those kind of folding closet doors and the other kind of closet doors. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> If I go back to when I was three, um, so I'm trans, and I so I came out a couple times in a couple different ways. Mm. I think in a way I sort of came out when I was three, although that didn't really it wasn't really officially. But like I was like, oh, I'm I'm a guy, a hundred percent. And then this was the '80s, and so being like a trans kid wasn't really a thing yeah. that it is now. But actually, looking back on my youth and childhood it's like I was trans Urkel like fully just like a hundred percent and like flip flip sunglasses rat tail bowl cut you know (laughs) plastic fedora (laughs) like I was full-on like trans Urkel as a kid and weirdly people were kind of like well 
I got bullied, but it was it was kind of later. Like it was actually kind of fine. Weirdly, in my school, I don't know what was going on. It was like a bizarre like. Where were you? This was in uh, our, near like Pomona, outside of L.A. Oh uh, no way! I'm yeah. from the Are you part. really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there till I was ten. Then I moved to North Carolina. Oh wow! And then things got a little bit rockier, mm. uh, right around like puberty too. Yeah, which so that is was oh weird. perfect time. Mm. Yeah, same for me. We moved. Right when puberty hit, yeah. and right after I bought an entire Flames themed wardrobe, nice. everything I bought yes. had Flames Radio. on it. I switched schools, <laughs> and boom, I was in it. <laughs> oh, that was I had a bowl cut in a Flames yeah. themed wardrobe, and I was dead trans. And Are you no also one a liked freshman me. at an art school. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was a closeted teen in Temecula. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, we should have had like a photo shoot I would have at the time. Yeah, that, yeah, it would have looked really <laughs> slick. Um, but then uh, it, when I was like 13, I had a sort of very like my so-called lifestyle argument with my mom. And I was like, no, I didn't, that's not going to happen because cause, cause I'm not straight. And so there was like that kind of thing. <laughs> and... Um, and so, yeah, I was actually kind of out as queer when I was 13, which was interesting. Wow. I was in middle school. And... Um, also kind of weird yeah. uh, and kind of the only one and that actually dropped out of high school because of uh, bullying and stuff like <gasps> no that. No way. I did. Wait, can I ask where in North Carolina? I was in Chapel Hill, which is actually oh, okay. kind of a progressive town, but this say. this is North Carolina in the 90s though and it was still like, it was actually really old school. It was just, it was old school homophobic back in the 90s wow. for, for sure. Like, yeah. It just was. Have you ever read the book, Dude, You're a Fag? No. It is so good. Really? It is this book, uh, it, it's kind of like a, psychology they they go in and study a school that matches the demographics of all the high schools the median high school in the 90s oh wow and huh. they it's so like socioeconomically yeah. like race everything and they interview all the kids on like gender and sexuality oh and you just it is an insane read in the 90s it, it's were, like in yeah. the 90s i would love to it what's is it called again? Cra- it's dude you're a fag i gotta read that it's that on amazing. pdf like yeah. online but it's yeah it's really good and yeah. reading that is like that's what happened to that's me and a people, lot of stuff i had suppressed i was yeah. like oh that definitely happened yeah. to me and i don't even consider that part of my story totally no it was rough it was weird um yeah but then what happened oh and then i finally so speaking of uh being a late bloomer um <laughs> Um, I I, th- I didn't transition until I was like 25. Mm. So in a way, you know what I mean? So there was another coming out. So it was kind yes. of like, God damn it, we're doing this again and again and again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was it was okay. Uh, so my parents are pretty, actually I'm very lucky. My parents have been very cool. I keep on pushing them into like new challenges. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly like over and over. Yeah, and yeah. they're like, all right, we're old pros at this now. <laughs> they, and, they, and they have, you know, really like, I actually think I totally believe to that, like that thing that children are here to teach our parents. Parents, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and like I you think you get the you get the children you need. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. I totally think so, and uh, we're we're really close and stuff. And I mean, when I came out as trans uh, when I was 25, which I mean, I was trans or cool, so it wasn't really like a total <laughs> shock. But also taking the steps was like, but but you know, a little bit. And um, I really felt like it was my you know responsibility to kind of walk like my parents through it and really have long conversations with and like make them talk about it actually. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, look, it's taken me a really long time to deal with this myself and figure it out and be comfortable. So I can only imagine it would take somebody else some time too. Beautiful. And that's okay. Yeah, you know? that's a really great way of thinking of it. And you know, I remember like my mom was like, well, I, you know, I have to like tell my hairdresser that we used a different pronoun and that's like, like she had to kind of come out in her own way (laughs) and like it was hard, you know, I I totally respect that that was actually a legit journey, you know? Yeah. And um, now my folks and family are like very, well my my nuclear family is very like, you know, they're like out and proud allies, it's very sweet. Yes. So it's been a a real road. Yeah, Yeah. I think I'm done coming out. I mean, (laughs) I've done like I've been like LGBT anti seriously so like I'm like yeah. a rise from the Dante's Inferno back to the surface. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. seven like layers. a rainbow phoenix. Yeah. Oh god, that's a terrible image. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel like I'm from a very like deluxe closet, like a very expensive, like <laughs> rotating, multi-roomed closet. Oh, so seductive. Mm-hmm. You wanted to say. like a hot sex swing closet. No, um, <laughs> but I do every five years. I have something new to tell my yeah. mom that will mm, gut her. Yeah, <laughs> and she's. Same thing, like rolling with the punches. And now I think she also has like a, a really inspiring, cute pride about it. And like 
talks about it whenever she can with like her friends, which is cute. She like considers it. She's still very religious. Mm. Uh, like That's her awesome, ministry yeah. to like mm-hmm. talk to other like uh, Christians about this, and which I love because it's kind of like you know my mom rocking the boat at church. You know, it's just like adorable. Mm. Uh, That's awesome and cool. But um, yeah, I what did it feel like? to come out as trans what was that like the um, journey like that was the hard one for some reason for some reason <laughs> yeah um, um god it took me forever too i mean not really i mean i was like in, in college people were like uh you're trans it's kind of like your your aunts <laughs> a little bit but the college version the yeah. college years version of that um and i was like oh yeah maybe um, but I was sort of, uh, yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty nervy about it for mm. a long time. Um, what kind of college did you go to? I went to a liberal arts college, cool. like a Hampshire College in oh, Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, cool. pretty out there and cool in those, mm-hmm. in these ways. I would say there was a lot of like, there was a lot of like, oh, let's talk about gender and transness and queer and blah 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 happening at that time, and I'm sure still there. Um, so it was around. I was, I was like, yeah, I don't know. It's, you know what? It's called old school shame. Really, yeah, for real. It is. Fully. It was like, it was stuck. Actually, I, I feel like, well, obviously the world around me, but also I got it from TV too. I remember like the first, um, cause I was like trans Urkel child and my parents were like, yeah, okay, you're a tomboy. We don't really care. They didn't really care. Totally. Cause they didn't read it as trans. They were just like, whatever. And then I saw this talk show one of those bad like 90s talk shows yes. in the 90s and they had a trans man on there and they just were like oh my god it was the most it was like so rough it was so Ooh. sad so rough and i like and just this poor man and he just was being like just you know interrogated to like nothing you know yeah. and uh ugh, it makes me so upset to think about yeah. it honestly. but i like saw i was about nine and i saw that and i was like oh shit that's me. Yeah. It's crazy that that's all it takes, too. Yeah. It's like some popular media that's celebrated on like a big scale, and then you're like, oh, this is the yeah. lens that everyone mm-hmm. sees through. Well, there's such mm-hmm. a like vacuum mm-hmm. there because there's like mm-hmm. no information about trans people. Mm-hmm. So then when you get one visual, mm-hmm. you're like, boom, that took yep. up the entire space. Yeah. I remember realizing like, so trans women would cause like anger or like fear in people but then like trans men were like ridiculed it was kind of like Mm -hmm. oh you you Mm -hmm. know like uh dick envy or whatever kind of like Mm -hmm. oh look at this fucking like fake man or whatever like on stuff like that growing up and i was just like that's a nightmare uh and it just sets you back millennia (laughs) you know (laughs) uh but it's beautiful to think of now i guess there really hasn't been like I, when I think of like Will and Grace or Modern Family, it's like mm-hmm. cool. All mm-hmm. of America gets the gay thing, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean, has like some positive association with gay culture. But there hasn't really been something like that for trans people yet, uh, of like a sitcom with like a trans main character. I guess well, Billions. What are we thinking? It's like Transparent. Definitely Transparent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which I worked on for f- four seasons. No way! Yeah. Oh my god, I was fun. a producer. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, is yeah. so yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. transparent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know my mom is obsessed with that. I story. mean, although, <laughs> of course, in retro, you know, in hindsight, there was, you know, whatever. But we don't have to go down that road. <laughs> it was not perfect in certain respects, although at, when that happened, there was nothing. There was zero, you know. It yes. was mm-hmm. like throwing something into the void. Absolutely. I mean, there was uh, Laverne on Orange is the New Black. There was mm-hmm. a couple things that all started around the same time. Yes. Mm-hmm. But before that year, there was nothing. You know what I'm kind of thinking, though, is of like a squeaky clean kind of like ABC yeah. family like show Network like comedy. god I want a Trojan horse like yeah. a I lovable know. trans couple into like an ABC family show I know it's true we uh, need that truly one day there's po- I mean there's mm-hmm. Pose now which right. re- yeah but that yeah gorgeous but something like a, yeah Will and Grace that I think reaches well, reaches yeah. the center the, the of our mm-hmm. lovely country yeah. <laughs> well it's I think it does give it's interesting because the more we see it and the more comfortable, I was a huge tomboy. Mm-hmm. My mom, it terrified my mom when I was younger. Wow. She pierced my ears so that people would know I was a girl. Eww, there we go. And yeah. like was real scared of, so loving and supportive of me, but was, I, like I remember, I was seven, eight, mm-hmm. um, 
but she was just afraid of the world and what people would because like you getting that lens into um like seeing that on tv and how the world's gonna react yeah. that was i think yeah the, and i think the like protective parent oh yeah, yeah and that generation like you know i think less so with us but still and i think it's so important to um yeah Totally. To spread a different message and to be more receptive because yeah, yeah, people have this yeah. fear that's just... It's hard for sure when like your parents think that they're saving you, but you're like, really what would save me is being allowed to be like who I am, being you know, me, like yeah. whether that's hard or not. But it is true. I mean, it sounds like bullying was a nightmare for you. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have it as bad as a lot of people, but certainly it's just, you know, was a part. It was part of the package. Yeah. <laughs> they came, but, uh, but I do think that like, you know, I'm a director and I work, you know, I work in media and have created a lot of things that have to do with transness and representation yes. trying to actually specifically do crossover stuff you know that's sort of in a little Trojan horse a little funny like you know in a genre or something yeah. so it's actually reaching beyond the choir and kind of like splitting this thing open a little bit because of experiences like the yeah. one I you know just mentioned totally yeah, yeah. it's kind of like when uh, you you know you get through the fire you kind of look yeah. back and try to yank people yeah, out yeah. quicker you know um <laughs> that is a violent <laughs> image. I just made you for everyone. Um, but yeah, we do. I mean, with this podcast, we definitely have a lot of people who have reached out and been like, I am in the closet. It's so great to listen to this. So uh, I bet it's nice uh, for people to see this media that you're creating and feel seen and feel like some hope for the future. Um, well, this is perfect because we're already talking about it. But our haunted word of today oh. is... Late bloomer. Usually the <laughs> sound effect goes in. Wait, did I spoiler the haunted word? No, it doesn't matter. I no, was te truly. I was cute to te tease it up. Te yeah, te teed it up. <laughs> you were teasing it out. I was teasing it up. <laughs> <laughs> like my hair. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Give me wine house look. Yeah, I was teasing for my a downward hair spiral. This. We haven't yeah. talked about this. For those of you not watching, Reese has been teasing his hair this I have entire been. episode. True. It's getting bigger um, and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, late bloomer. What do you think? What does that word make you think of? Those words, uh, and do you identify? as one we already heard from you Sammy I'm, yeah um, entirely so I I think about coming out late knowing for so long being so scared do you feel like regret for it do you understand why it happened what's what's going on um, I think I I think I've like let myself feel the regret um, but yeah I definitely feel like I wish I had just loved myself a little bit more mm. earlier on in my life to mm. be able to, and not, yeah, to have not been as scared and to just love myself a little bit more. Um, totally. Because I didn't come out until I was 26. Yeah. I think it was 26. Um, and yeah, and had really just, uh, I just felt, yeah, a lot of um, Shame, like during that process, because I knew for so long, and then once I did, guilt about not doing it sooner. Yeah. Um, you know, I also like understood it, but yeah, totally. Yeah, I'd feel like I wasn't. I feel like I was living through a filter, so I don't think I was doing anything truthful for myself until so late in life, and I was like, well, now I'm, now I feel good being me. Yeah. Um, but I just felt yeah frozen for a long time. Totally. Yes, yeah. that's exactly how I would explain it too. I also it feels so like expansive when you come out and you're like, this is what life feels like. Like, <sighs> holy shit. Yeah, I was curious it, what you guys felt about because I I feel like my I came out pretty young, but then the way that I like I don't feel like I actually got to be gay until much later mm -hmm. because of my situation. Yeah. Because you're just totally. isolated in this world of Ooh. like being alone, the only gay person. Yes. Oh, that's so interesting. And that was kind of what it felt like for me was just like, then you're just, oh, you're either a token or a clown. Mm -hmm. Oof. And yeah. those are also kind of the same token. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The clown, <laughs> two sides of, the clown two sides can be a token. The same token. Can the token be a clown? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I, d I didn't even really have any gay friends until I was like, maybe 19 mm -hmm. and that wasn't even like the best kind of situation it was like once you really meet your people and then you're like oh my god f like god this took so long mm -hmm. to like finally feel like i'm 
finding a groove with other queer people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was, yeah, that was kind of like a really turbulent Was that like a moving field. to a big city kind of thing? Do you think that's what helped with it? Yeah, definitely that. And yeah, I don't know. Like, there's also just a lot of fear regardless of whether you're out or not, or at least there was for me when it came to gay relationships and like sex and dating, like I just had a lot of fear. Mm, mm -hmm. And I had no, because I didn't have any mentors or I didn't know any other people who went through, who were go going through the same thing, mm -hmm. I just had no models. Yeah. So definitely. then I would see people that I didn't know and like, you know, you don't really know how to start and you don't really know like, yeah, you don't really know what to do totally, or yeah. you feel ignorant. And also for me, that made me kind of defensive. Mm -hmm. um, well, the, like the images that we get or like the messages that we get are so wild. Like yeah. when I first came out, I went straight to like the Abbey. Like I went to like club culture because <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm gay now. This is what it looks like. And it yeah. was just like the most isolated I've ever felt in my life. Just <laughs> like sitting there with a beer alone in like a booming club being like, and this is life now, you know, it's like, ah! Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, totally. yeah, when you don't, it, yeah, it's so nice when you finally meet like sweet uh, political queers or like, you know, people who speak your language and are mm -hmm. like having a movie night or, you know, just like these yeah. like pure co sides of the coin. I mean, there's totally. like going out too, if that's like your thing, but finding out that there's like room for everything. Yeah, like I feel like my, I didn't have any good relationships with, other like sexual relationships i have always had really deep loving relationships with pl people that i'm like platonic with mm. with and they're mostly cis women mm. so it's like this also i'm like that probably has something to do with some fear that's still lingering that's really interesting yeah. you know like the closet is still hovering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the closet scars are still healing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like totally. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that's so interesting that you say that because I think, it, well, like the thing about it being really isolating to be the only gay person for all those years. Because mm. in my mind, I'm like, if I had just come out, like it would have been so great, but it's like, no, I still would have been in not. Temecula at a it, mega yeah. church as the only gay person with people like, quietly praying for me you totally. know <laughs> nightmare and it gives you this perspective of like i had this like fuck every single person that you know like for a long time you like that was my <laughs> way of dealing with it was just being like goth and fuck everybody yeah <laughs> yeah you yeah know? you went super anti you had your anti yeah. tour yeah big time uh -huh. <laughs> It's, I think about high school too, cause I have that regret of like, if I, I had the same thing that you were saying, um, I wish I had, like if only I had just come out, it would have been so much better and easier. Uh, but the, the one person I knew that had come out in high school, cause there's always like one or, I mean so many of us I think are, um, and a lot of my closest friends in high school later in life were a lot of us are gay. Yeah, same here. Funny enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we found each other, but we were still so scared to tell each other. We dated each other st straight, you yeah. know. Um, <laughs> but the the two people that were openly out in high school, um, there's definitely bullying, but it's like you're under a microscope because you are the one yeah, person. Yeah, you're the whole that's, test population. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I feel like okay. everything they did was under, and that was, te I wanted to hide. So that's a yeah, terrifying. Yeah, I felt like people who were closeted, now that I'm older, I look back and I'm like, people who were closeted were probably like, mm, yikes, you know. To you. Like, to me, yeah, I thought about that because I of the, like, visibility that, they saw that we have a I lot had. of questions like that that come in from viewers yeah. that are like wondering why they uh like their aversion to gay stuff is so strong because they yeah. think that it will out them against right. their will if they show like a right. like for that which i get like it's not a thing that i'm like no but having to experience at. that mm -hmm. sucks, yeah you know? oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Um, I made a short, I made this series called This Is Me that's like a web series of short documentaries on trans people. And there's one of them, I'm just gonna, I'm not, I'm not trying to plug it because it's an old project. I mean, no, watch no, it please, if you like. Yeah. I mean, it's not my main plug. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it's, it came out a couple years ago. But um, but it reminds me of what we're talking about because there's one episode called, the series called, is called This Is Me and the episode's called And My Sisters. And it's a documentary and it's these three trans women um, who I know IRL, and they're sitting around talking about what it means to be um, seen as quote unquote like clockable, or mm. and the old school thing of like when you were a trans person, say you're a trans you know trans person back in the day, you see somebody, you see another trans person, you ignore the other one because they can out you by association. Yes, you know what I mean. It can yeah. Like, so it's kind yeah. of like a safety thing, but then uh, at the same time, by the same token, it like. Um, it, it it led to so like people not being able to find community, have friendships, um, just just being invisible as a yes. as a and, for, and of course there's a, like a thing about survival in certain like contexts, um, but it is something that's like really important to like unpick and look at. And the video the the episode actually ends up with them talking about how they're pushing against that idea and like forging these sisterhoods and being oh, you know what I mean. That's great. Um, so that's online if people want to watch it. That's great. Yeah. yeah no, mm. I love Rex in the yeah. show. This is perfect. I feel that sometimes I feel like early on the first like trans men that I like were I would be like have the biggest friend crush on someone and squish. Yeah, I would have the biggest squish. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be squishing on someone so hard. I just um, get an image of like a wet sponge being like. <laughs> and no one wanted to hang out with me because I was just like dumping a wet sponge on their head <laughs> at the mall. Uh, no, but I definitely I felt like a strong that. arm bar uh, sometimes uh. where it would just be like, oh, okay, dude, like. Then mm. I guess we won't be friends. But I do mm. wonder if it, there was that's something a, like that. That's a sad face, though. That's, hmm? a sad, that's a sad face. Yeah. 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 yeah that's a bummer. Um, okay. Cool. Well, let's move on to the best part of the show, in my in my humble opinion. Uh, these are questions submitted by viewers. Some of them say their name and pronouns. Some are anonymous. So I'll just let you guys know when that comes up. Um, okay. Our first question. Can you talk a bit about crushing when you're in the closet? Handling a crush on a straight person, coping with rejection, and the threat of rejection, et cetera. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever... I, I have a I playlist realized... called No More Straight Girls, so oh, I will... <laughs> Does it have, like, seven-year bitch on it and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. It's um, just me, like... Yeah, yeah totally. L7. <laughs> Wargasm. Um... I j remember I joined lots of things and did lots of things that I was not interested in just to follow my straight friends around that I had crushes on. Mm, mm -hmm. And I don't regret any of it. What are we talking? We talking track and field. <laughs> well, I'm talking. We, I did um, <laughs> lots of video games, Boy Scouts. <laughs> Uh, rowing, you know, like crew. crew? No. I did crew for like two years just because of this boy. No. Yeah. No. Who I was best friends with. <laughs> Homoerotic crew. So yeah. it was also Ooh, crew, crew is, is incredible. Erotic. It's yeah. crew is erotic. deeply erotic. You're it's just like, both like, like, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you're in those like <laughs> leotards. What? You're in leotards, yeah. girl. You're kidding me. Mm -mm. They have little shorts. They have little shorts, yeah. and there's like the varsity team who are what? just these like demigods of fitness. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, honestly, what were they doing to us with these like uniforms? Like volleyball <laughs> is just like hot little shorts. Yeah. That's not okay. Like when I was so deep in the closet, I would just go to a volleyball game and be like, this is too much for my body. Like every cell yeah. is like multiplying. <laughs> yeah, know. totally. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is malignant. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, um, yeah. Did you ever confess a love to a? Um, no, I was, I was like pretty sure because I, st I feel like I started hooking up with, or started like sexually experimenting with boys when I was really young mm. so like usually if there was some kind of chemistry happening there was like both sides were like 
do you want to play a game? Yeah. Like there was like something like yes. that happening. It'd be like, truth or dare. Yeah. You know? And then it'd be like, um, <laughs> take, take off your pants and like rub peanut butter all over your chest. <laughs> you know? I dare you. What a red herring. That yeah. peanut butter was not going to be used. <laughs> or was it? Uh, we yeah. have so much talk about that on this podcast. Just everyone oh, hooking really? up at such a young age, literally except for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always such a like slap in the face. I'm like, I did kiss someone once. We even I sometimes would wet. call it like practice for adulthood. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. we would refer to it as like as if playing house or something. But anyway, like in when I got older, it was like that wasn't happening. Yeah. Like yeah. that kind of tacit understanding of like secrecy and volleying the you know like the risk uh just like wasn't even in the game like you know being in the same sleeping bag with this boy that i had a crush on <laughs> and like we're just having a conversation and i'm like waiting for the the cue <laughs> for it to happen for like that moment when we're both like so what should we do now you know <laughs> and it just never came that is so cute to imagine two boys yeah. in a sleeping bag and one is like this is the can night. you imagine <laughs> for hours we used to do that and it was yeah. absolute torture oh, oh my yeah, God. Like, yeah it's like the school i went to was just so unbelievably religious that like the idea that people might be gay wasn't even on the table yeah so it was like They're gender like, segregated that? dorms and oh. like you like go like swimming naked in the ocean your first night as like a welcome back and it was just mm. like <laughs> and everyone was like dogpiling naked on the beach and i was like is no one like aware like, i am so gay yeah uh, also it's really interesting that that stuff can't be viewed through the lens of eroticism for those people either like yeah. as soon as mm. anyone's like even though it is, even though it's platonic, it's still a ero deeply erotic yeah, in like a in like a powerful unifying way that doesn't have to be like penetrative and like no totally patriarchal in that way where like this is sex yeah you know well, but I'm like, like that's like part of the ritualistic nature of yes. it is that it's kind of homoerotic a lot of religious stuff is deeply erotic yeah. you're like praying over each other and like touching yeah. and like well, you know yeah it's like that energy that good yeah. good energy it's that good energy yeah any any weigh-ins on a crush on a straight person? I don't have a I don't have a personal funny uh, I don't have a humorous personal anecdote unfortunately. <laughs> but um, so I have this movie coming out called Adam and it's actually kind of that scenario so I thought I would just mention what yeah. that's about a little bit cuz it's that but flipped upside down uh, backwards and inside out and it's about um, a 17-year-old dorky teenage boy who lives with his parents and then goes to live with his cool older lesbian sister for a summer in New York City in 2006 mm -hmm. and this guy his name's Adam and he's like following his cool sister around going to all these like lesbian parties and he has, doesn't really know what anything is and is kind of like clueless and then he meets this amazing person this this girl and he has this deep crush on her and then a little later into their conversation after they're totally hitting off and she's about to leave she's like oh, okay so here's my number but just so you know I've never dated a trans guy before and he's like, what? But doesn't <laughs> totally know what that means because he's totally like a 17-year-old dork oh my God, cis yeah. boy, right? And um, and then she leaves and he's like, oh, wait, uh, and then it's too late to correct her and he's caught in this lie <laughs> that she thinks he's trans. And it's, so it's like, it's kind of like the trans experience of what, you know what I mean? These stories that we think of like a trans person in a small town who has a crush on somebody and they think mm. that they're, they're not serious. trans. Yeah, exactly. totally. Mm. It's that but mm. flipped. It's like boys don't cry but fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, not uh, gutting. You know? yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. not exactly, but yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, so so Adam's kind of like he's got a crush on this person, and he's trapped in his own closet. Ironically, yeah, you know what I mean. And the whole world is queer and trans around him. So that yes. is a scenario that we explore in the new movie. That is Adam. so fun. That's yeah, really it cool. Really good. Yeah, the, in like a little oasis, like yeah, <laughs> majority I mean, except for in this like tiny little <laughs> subculture. If you, if you call himself. Bushwick in two thousand six an oasis, yeah, yeah <laughs> and but, I do. Yeah, I don't uh, do. <laughs> 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 oh man it's actually sorry to interject again no it is like a really interesting political 
inversion that I feel like needs to happen in so many on so many levels in our country in general right now. Mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. I'm excited to see it actually. Yeah, like just left to right yeah. actually this way of like there's a lot, especially living in like a city when you know I feel like I definitely live in a queer bubble. Imagining a religious southern person coming and being in my world mm -hmm. is like a really interesting funny thing to see mm -hmm. that we don't think about as like them being this other trapped in yeah. our reality yeah that i think is really hum like makes a lot of it's really humbling yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. i think it's really fun too because if you're gonna invert the story it proves that the story is already mass you know like everyone mm -hmm. already understands it mm -hmm. so i think right. that's a really fun step for transmedia it's yeah. like it's invert yo it's like You're we're right. there baby you know that's a good point yeah it's kind of funny because it's like you know the audience is totally ahead of the characters because everybody had this just t totally different level of trans literacy at that time and was sort of stumbling their way through all this stuff totally oh six man and um, what was it? oh, I was thinking too, like about how it's like. Well, I I really like how it's like really plays with who's the insider and who's the outsider, and really kind of breaks those rules and questions mm -hmm. all that. And because um, I'll talk about outsider audiences, meaning straight people, you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. whoa, my head's going, you know. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but, and then even like, well. Never mind. I was going to talk about current. I was going to bring up some dark current politics. Oh, go for it. Yeah. I, well, I mean, it's. I, I even was thinking about it the other day about how like um, I was like, you know, it's like. Adam is like, um, is like, what is the word I was going to use? He's like the minority of this world, right? Um, but he, he's not threatened by that, which is actually, it's interesting if you look at what's happening in culture right now. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, Adam actually leans, he makes some mistakes, don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> it's about him making mistakes and then learning from it. But he actually leans into it, like, really learns, like, like really respects this community and is, like, totally changed by it in this really positive, profound way. Cool. That's so great. And I, I really think about that in terms of what's going on right now politically. You know what I mean? That's in such, terms mm -hmm. that's such a good example, <laughs> which is very rare. Totally. I feel like even the narratives we have that are good and radical are so often like boys don't cry where it's like yeah. this disaster where there's like tragedy. this if, this like yeah this tragedy mm -hmm. and i'm like kind of tired of seeing gay tragedies yeah yeah, yeah. where it's just like the disaster of being gay yeah absolutely and it's yeah. like yeah yeah it's like that is a story to be told uh and it has been <laughs> so yeah. let's mm -hmm. see what else totally. happens when you're yeah. trans or, I know. or not trans i want to be i want to see a world in which it's cool to be queer and trans yeah. and like <laughs> yeah. you know totally. a, a 17 year old straight boy is like wait, hey guys wait how yeah. do i do that What's <laughs> <Yeah. going on? laughs> oh, i just wish i was trans yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah totally yeah. that's cool uh, oh god um all right our next question let me see. Uh, hi, Allie and friends. My name is Adriana, she, her, and I'm bi. I just graduated college and plan on becoming a physician assistant. I was wondering if any of you had any thoughts on how healthcare providers can offer a safe and healthy space for all genders and sexualities. It makes me so sad to hear about people avoiding getting the care that they need because they have had bad experiences or they fear being judged. I want to be able to offer that space for people. Also, I love this podcast. It made me feel... Uh, great about being bi with mostly straight friends. Heart. Yeah. Mm. Cool. We probably all have fucked up stories about doctors <laughs> yeah. and things doctors have said to us, I'm sure. Yes, oh, yeah. definitely. Although, recently I've been going in uh, for Kaiser. I don't know if I can say their name, whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, they've had me in on like non-binary panels uh, where oh. I talk to all the doctors and it's like a and a It's literally been the most beautiful experience I went wow. in, oh my God. first it was with like the psych department and it's all of SoCal. So it's like people right. are there for like this long ass like training seminar. Like a auditorium? Uh, no, smaller, but still oh. like hundreds. Right, that's um, crazy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then they get to like ask all the questions and be like kind of bashful and like, how do you this? And then mm. uh, just last week I went in for like endocrinology cause like so many kids are transitioning young and they like had so many questions for me, which I couldn't answer because I'm like, I wasn't even like at seven. Boy, do I wish I could have skipped puberty, but like, no, I didn't. Uh, so that's been really cool. Like, wow. that's amazing. A few hospitals like truly trying to like hmm. get to that literacy point. Just how to navigate conversations and how to like yes. give care in a way that's more caring and to like meet someone and 
be able to like ask questions without it being kind of like everything's on the line like asking the wrong question to a patient i could see being really scary mm -hmm. so they were like brought me in as like the guinea pig <laughs> essentially because i was like ask whatever yeah especially uh, if they're nice. really young too sometimes like my i'm being a nanny told you guys earlier that oh, i yeah, was a yeah. nanny but i'm a nanny <laughs> yeah bully the nanny I bully the that. nanny <laughs> it's not the name that i used at when i worked in public school um but my my the kid that i watch is gender non-conforming mm. and is very defiant about gender gender it's very mm. like you know whenever there's a question of like what are you from kids or adults it's very like Love you know, it. Like, cool. Whoa, yeah. the future. You know, yeah. That makes me giddy. They're like, I don't care. <laughs> well, you know. Love it. But even with them, it's kind of like uh, he's not asking the questions that deeply yet, but also they've gone to a lot of counseling about it because there has been a lot of pushback from the community. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's really good that in LA there's resources that are trans specific yes the, yeah. where people are like way ahead of the kid because he also doesn't really have the kind of know-how or language right. for even what he's feeling yeah so it's kind of amazing that for the parents and for him that like this doctor is like i know exactly how to hold space for you yeah mm -hmm. it was you know? it was really mm -hmm. shocking like all the a lot of the endocrinologists were like older and were like yeah, so I have a family who their daughter started transitioning. Uh, she doesn't need hormones yet, but is now like dressing in women's clothes and, you know, like just being a little girl now. But they had to take her out of her school because like the school wasn't understanding and then mm -hmm. just start her in a new Bye. school. Like, here's your new life. And she's like four or five and she's like oh. getting like chronic stomach aches and oh. they think it's from anxiety from mm. like that whole. Oh yeah. And everyone was just like, oh. You know, it's just like everyone in the room was like on the same page, which I like loved. But that's, I, I think it's really interesting that transitioning is happening way younger and I think it's good. I think, obviously. Yeah, yeah, The I mean, I don't know. I think my advice for that question too about going into medicine is I think it's such an area of expertise and you want your doctor to be confident in the medicine and the care that they're giving. But I actually think in this specific regard, um, being humble mm -hmm. is a really good way of going about caring. Like know your stuff medically, um, but I think being um, like leveling with someone and just being humble and not knowing and wanting to learn from patients, totally. like kind of like, because I think what you're doing is beautiful and amazing and should like needs to be done. Yeah. But that would be my advice. Like if you're going to, yeah, especially, you know, I think nurses have, um, are taught to care for people. And uh, sometimes with the PAs and, and doctors, it's much more about, um, you know, the medicine and the science. So I think just, um, yeah, keeping that in mind and caring for people is probably the what I would. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, like you can know everything about medicine and stuff, but if you you know the culture is changing, so yeah. to be like humble enough to look at all of that is really interesting. I also think a lot of questions came up uh, in these two panels that I've done, where like kind of the attitude towards trans or non-binary people was like it's never enough. You know, like it was like, oh, we got mm. one person's pronouns wrong and she was really mad. And it's like, well, let's pump the brakes on. You know, it's like <laughs> this person is it's getting it from all angles. It would be very nice if a place of like healing and health was kind of like an oasis for them to feel like safe. And literally like all you have to do is like put a note on the file of like pronouns, you know, like just have that become like second nature uh, would be cool. I appreciate the question, though. I feel like we need more people like this. So yes. we applaud you, listener. Yes, yes. definitely. Mm, thank you. Adriana, thank you. Um, okay, let's see. I am from a very homophobic culture where people casually say very hurtful and offensive things. How did you learn to stand up for a part of yourself that you felt the need to hide for most of your life? Mm. I had trouble hiding. So <sighs> I feel like... 
Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I really identify with like Quentin Crisp, like somebody who was like, there was never a closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, he's like, he's like, I became really loud about it because there was never really any other, yeah, there was never really any other option. Yeah. And, but also, it doesn't make it less scary. Um, yeah. Also, like, you don't want to put yourself at risk. Like, I understand people who don't, I feel like if if your life is at in danger or if you feel like you could get hurt, it makes sense to try and find the best way to survive. But if it's about social obligation, personally, I'm like, if you're not living authentically, you get sick in other ways. Yeah, that's really interesting. Like you're kind Mm -hmm. of playing with fire regardless. Mm -hmm. Like one choice is not really better than the other at the end of the day. And if you have the choice and it truly is your choice, if you like check in with yourself and you're like, I could speak up and it would be hard and I might get some flack and there might be social consequences, but I would survive and I wouldn't be physically harmed, then you should absolutely do it for that reason that otherwise you're kind of diminishing something that is always going to follow you and you're kind of in the process training yourself to always feel submissive in that way to the people who don't accept you. Mm, Yeah, that's great. And I'm curious about like what, it's hard to find your place in like kind of like history, I guess. I think like reading uh, like queer experience or uh, you know like just books that have to deal with queer people coming out or like knowing your queer history can sometimes help push you to feel like if you're thinking in your own mind and you're like someone would make fun of me yeah. or you know whatever your yeah, worst fear totally. is getting uh, perspective and seeing yeah look up Marsha P. Through. Johnson <laughs> yeah. who's that? oh she's the person who's famous for throwing the brick at Stonewall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I, and she's also yeah. just a, like an amazing person in general. Like her middle initial stands for pay it no mind. Wow. Mm-hmm. Cool. Which is like to me I mean, it's so good. Oh, like, that's I so good. I love that as a philosophy for life yes. and it's also something that you should think about when you're asking this question. Exactly, yeah. Just like pay it no mind and speak your truth. Yeah. You know? I have a, um, I made a trans history web series. Sorry, I'm like plugging ah, all these things. No, wait, it's but, so nice um, to have you. But these are all free. I'm not, well, Adam is going to be in theaters, but the other ones are free online. So totally. I'm like, check it out. Like, what do you got to lose? Yeah. But um, it's a series called, because actually for me too, I was like, what is trans history? I don't know anything. Like, there's just a vacuum. What the, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. You know, oh, it turns out it wasn't totally a coincidence that that stuff was sort of suppressed. And, you know what I mean? Not recorded. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah. I was really interested in trans history for to understand my own, you know, you know, sort of trans uh, patrilineage or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I made this series called "We've Been Around," and it's we've been around series cool. com. But there's one on Marcia and Sylvia oh, cool. um, called "Star," and it's about they're about five minutes long each, oh my God. and they're all these incredible stories. And it's like truly. Hmm. Every every struggle that we th- that we're going through has happened in the past. It's oh. like it's actually amazing. That is incredible. Wow. It's crazy. Crazy. It's it's a, crazy. What a great resource you are. Well, thank you. Great resource. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's all the time we have today. No. Which is your drag day. <laughs> uh, no, but that's so beautiful. That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, that actually is all the time we have. <laughs> Looking uh, down at the clock, it honey. It did fly by. It really didn't. I say. Mm. God, I love this show. Um, Well, you know what? Thank you so much for listening, those of you at home. If you have a question for us, please send it in. We'd love to hear from you. You can do it through the Instagram, our Discord, or an anonymous survey link that we will put up uh, very shortly. Uh, Thank you so much. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Hey, what's up? It's Allie. If you like college humor and you want to support us, please sign up for Dropout. For the low, low price of a bag of crickets for your pet lizard, you'll get videos a whole week sooner to chat with us in the Dropout Discord and exclusive content such as my show, Total Forgiveness. By the twilight's last gleam. Sign up for your free trial today and please send me a picture of your lizard. (laughs) I want to see her. (laughs) I want to see her dance.